Welcome to Grace for Transformation Kenya, a Bible teaching ministry of Grace Covenant Church in Kenya under the leadership of Pastor Maurice J. Mwale. In case you are coming across this channel for the first time, we encourage you to subscribe so as to continue being notified whenever we post our teachings. We are continuing with our series titled Advancing from Doctrine to Practice and we are confident that you will be informed, spiritually edified and transformed. Book your seat and let us delve into this priceless ancient truth. Welcome to this series. The gift of word of knowledge. In the same 1 Corinthians 12, 8, we have, For to one is given the word of wisdom through the gift, the spirit, and to another the word of knowledge through the same spirit. Continue remembering that it's given given. This is not something you close your eyes and say, God, give me the word of knowledge. No. It's something that is given to you. It's not something you try to, to figure out and you always have a word of knowledge. No, it's given. It's given. We will continually remind ourselves that what we have as spiritual gifts, we have received from Christ. The spiritual gift of the word of knowledge is the supernatural ability to receive by revelation and transmit by inspiration the divine will. You will see there's a thin line between the gift of wisdom and the gift of the word of knowledge. In the gift of the word of knowledge, you actually hear words in your mind. You hear voices. <laughs> there are people who have that supernatural ability to hear. So that when you speak, you speak consciously. You speak intentionally. You speak with clarity. That's what you have heard within you. You have learned how to work with the Holy Spirit that you can come and stand here and as you are teaching, you can hear with clarity that this is what God wants me to tell this brother here or this sister here. This is what is mostly confused with prophecy in the New Testament church. And this is what is mostly misused in the New Testament church. When you see people saying there's somebody here it's because they want to practice the gift of the word of knowledge. Somebody here, somebody watching you on television, you have, you have a, something paining you here. It's because they want to practice the word of knowledge. But the word of knowledge has clarity. First of all, you receive it with clarity. Then you speak it consciously because it's the Holy Spirit directing you to speak it. So let's look at it from two viewpoints. The pre-canon age those who were endowed with this gift transmitted portions of the word of God which was later canonized into what we have today as the Bible. Most of the Bible we have today was by word of knowledge. Word of knowledge does not have thus says the Lord. Thus says the Lord is prophecy. Word of knowledge you are so sure is the action of the Holy Spirit in you helping you speak these things. And that's why the apostolic time, the most prevalent gift was the word of knowledge. You never heard Peter say, that says the Lord. You never heard Paul say, that, that says the Lord. But you will hear Paul say, this is from me and not from the Lord. Because there are things he is saying that he knows this is the word of knowledge that God has given me and he writes them down. But there is something he wants to add on because of his own relationship with God and he understands that this is still helpful to the body of Christ. So most of the New Testament was written through the word of knowledge. And that's why Paul says in uh, 1 Corinthians 13 verse 9 eh? For we know in part and we prophesy in part. But when that which is perfect has come, then that which is in part will be done away with. What Paul was saying here is that there will be no need to rely on the word of knowledge again after we have the canonized Bible. He's saying Peter has something he's saying, Paul has something he's saying, uh, James has something, John has something. We are all receiving the word of knowledge but it's a time that we'll have the entire Bible compiled together. Then we'll not have to rely on the word of knowledge. Not that the word of knowledge will come to end. I have a difference with the people who say that it ceased because of one scripture in the Bible that the gifts and calling of God are irrevocable. We don't have to rely on the word of knowledge for the day-to-day -day living. We have the word of knowledge recorded. 
recorded in the Bible because as the apostles of the New Testament received portions of the scripture, they penned it down and is now what we refer to. So instead of sitting there and waiting that God show, show the man of God what I'm going through, just pray and read the Bible and you have the word of knowledge in the Bible. They also provided special direction. So the, the pre-canon before the Bible was canonized, those who had the word of knowledge, they also provided special direction to the young church before the Bible was compiled and made available. Most prophets mentioned in the New Testament had this gift. Now look at most of the Corinthians letters. Paul is answering questions that he has been asked by the church because they are going through some situations that they don't understand how to solve them and they have to seek for guidance from the apostles. And that's why always you hear the apostles saying that we are helping churches and guiding churches. It's because when the church was young, they didn't have the Bible to rely on. The man of God came and preached here and left. We started learning what the few things we are learning, but we are now in a guacmaya. We want to get out of this guacmaya. What do we do? Paul, you are the one who brought this thing to us. Give us clarity. And Paul will answer concerning the questions you asked me about marriages, I hereby say. So he'll give direction to the young church. The gift of knowledge also helped because now maybe the question is being asked is not something he has taught before. The church is experiencing something that is new and the man of God has to give direction. He must get the knowledge, divine revelation and give direction of what God is speaking. Special direction. They gave special direction. Not everybody will just come and give direction to the church. It is the apostolic authority that was allowed to do that. So we have here love never fails, but whether there are prophecies, they will fail. Where there are tongues, they will cease. Where there is knowledge, the gift of knowledge, it will vanish away. A time will come when now you have the written down knowledge. And uh, that one of this a sister here, there's a brother, they can, God is showing me, will come to an end because people have to rely on the word of God. Let me say this. God is free. God is sovereign. And he can give you a word of knowledge concerning someone who has a need and what God wants to do in, in his life. But when God gives you a word of knowledge concerning someone who has a need and what is God intending to do in his life, there is clarity in it. Now when that happens, there are two things. God is seeking, when you speak to that person, that when you tell him, then it will arouse faith in him to receive what God wants to do in his life. That's what happens. So God can have a word of knowledge. God can say to somebody, even someone who has never known you, can say, Benjamin, I know what you are going through. You want to build a house. But God is saying, go slow. It can be like that. It's possible. But caution. Once you have the Bible, you don't over rely on the word of knowledge. We rely on what the Bible says. And if there's a word of knowledge, it must be in concurrence with the Bible. Uh, there's a church where someone went one day and someone said, if all men who are here stand up, then they stood up. Hear the voice of God. Remove your wallet from your pocket. And all men removed their wallet from their pocket. And they were told, put it in the offering basket. And they put all the wallets in the offering basket. And, the, and Benjamin was told, remove all the money from that wallet. Then return the wallet to the owner. And they, receive, they, they lift up your hands and receive from God. You see, you can tell, Goja, Goja. You know, you can argue and say, and there are people who don't work with wallets these days. No, they know how to go about it. They say, some of you have money in the bank and you have a checkbook here. You have an ATM card here. Can you take a paper and write which amount of money you will bring in tomorrow? They know how to go about it. By the way, people have misused this. There is what we call, uh, is it investigation officers? You investigate someone to know what car does he drive, where does he stay, where does he work. Then you bring that information to the man of God. Then when the man of God is ministering, he'll stand up and say, Sister, do you have a Mercedes, a blue Mercedes Benz? She's like, how did he know? 
Are you working with the UN? Yes. But there are people who have gone behind the scenes and investigated and investigated and they are bringing this. And then the man of God will say, the Lord wants you to surrender that car to the church. He's going to give you a better car. And the whole church goes in a frenzy. You, you walk with your key because of the misuse of gifts. But can God still give us his servants the word of knowledge? Yes, he can. The word of knowledge is not the Bible, but it must concur with the Bible. God can point to someone who is going through suffering and that person is about to despair and God is telling that person, just have faith, I'm going to heal you. That is that. It still happens today. It still happens today. The word of knowledge in the church today may entail accurate declaration of the word of God under the energy and wisdom provided by the Holy Spirit and based on the study and understanding of God's word, Bible doctrine. So when you do accurate exposition of Bible doctrine, that's word of knowledge in the, in the church today. And number two, an understanding of the infinite things of God through the enablement of the Holy Spirit, this may consist of the power of knowing that which is hidden or yet to come. Maybe a word of knowledge. But again, I must say it must concur with the Bible. The difference between word of wisdom and word of knowledge and prophecies, some prophets never knew what they were talking about. Prophets were taken like in a frenzy and they will speak and speak and speak and when they finish they say, that says the Lord. But the word of knowledge has accuracy, has understanding, has a, uh, you speak it intentionally because you know what you are doing. But prophecy, and that's why you hear our common scripture in First Peter chapter 1 verse 10 to 12 that they inquired, the prophets inquired, what are we speaking? But they had to say, that says the Lord. But the word of knowledge can come anytime, anywhere, for the purpose of God, also revealing his will, revealing what he's about to do to the nation, to the church, and to an individual. So once you have the word of knowledge, then what you need is the word of wisdom, how to operate in the word of wisdom. <laughs> Dear friend, you may have watched this message and yet you are not born again. It's not an accident, but God's plan. All you need to do now is believe that Christ Jesus died on the cross and settled the penalty for all your sins. When you rely only on this finished work, you become the righteousness of God because all your sins are forgiven. You become a child of God with all the rights of a son. You will never ever perish because you have eternal life, the very life of God. You're welcome to worship with us every Sunday from 10 a.m. We are located at Umoja Inako Estate along Moy Drive, directly opposite the Umoja 2 Chief's Office, Nairobi, Kenya.